Let's welcome back E.J. Antonia and Melissa Armo to join us once again and close out this conversation. Uh, Melissa, I didn't think this trip could get any more cringy until I saw this clip of Gavin Newsom running over a small Chinese child and then, uh, like, wrestling him after the fact. I feel bad for both of them, actually. <laughs> Well, clearly, <laughs> I think I, that's appropriate I, response. <laughs> I do. I honestly he didn't mean to, to trip, and he's playing basketball in a suit. And I think the, the more interesting thing is, what is he doing over there in China right now? Clearly, he is trying to set the tone for a presidential race at some point in the future, probably 2028. So he's making the rounds. He's getting out there. I think he should be more focused on his state in California and improving California. Yeah, we'll get into the substance a little bit more in a second. But first, I just wanted to get both of your reaction to this clip. EJ, I don't know if you're a basketball player or not, but um, the footwork, Gavin Newsom's footwork, you know, questionable, to say the least. Well, I'd say it resembles his policies in California. And, and the idea that we would ever <laughs> want to export those policies to the rest of the nation, I mean, that, that's just lunacy. He has helped turn California into an absolute basket case. They are losing so many people that for the first time in their history, they are now losing seats in Congress after gaining them at a breakneck pace for a half a century. I mean, really, why on earth is he out uh, playing basketball in China why has he ever left his state instead of solving the problems, the very problems that he helped create, by the way? That's true. That's true. All the way back to his days as the mayor of San Francisco. Uh, also, I wanted to play this clip. Uh, CNBC's Squawk on the Street had some time to poke fun of Gavin Newsom as well. Here they are. Or Gavin Newsom was over there as well. Yeah, Gavin Newsom. What was um, that? What did he accomplish there? We are talking about climate stuff. Did wine come up? Cabernet. Why? Because they're big consumers of Cabernet? No, because well, Gavin Newsom knows the wine business. But... <laughs> you are being very obscure. I'm just trying to entertain our viewers who are uh, yeah, tired of losing I... money. Well, Jim Kramer, Kramer uh, no stranger to getting things wrong himself in, in the past. But, you know, n nobody, to, 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 to kind of get at our larger point, nobody seems to understand exactly what Gavin Newsom is doing over there. Melissa, there was some talk about the whole green energy sector. But is China really our friend when it comes to anything dealing with solar or wind energy, when it comes to energy production at all? Is there anything to be gained from working with China? China really isn't concerned about the environment if it, if it has to do with their own production. So China is concerned about China. Make no mistake about that. So, again, I don't know exactly why he was there, and it really doesn't make any sense. But I mean, people are going to continue to speculate unless he states otherwise. But China is interested in making money. They're not interested in the environment. They've had their own economic issues since COVID as well. And again, we still never got to the bottom of many, many details of many, many things that happened from COVID. I guess we're never going to get right. the, to the bottom of those things since Biden hasn't wanted to investigate them in the last three years. And that's really a shame. And people keep talking about GDP growth and Kamala Harris and your earlier clip was talking about the economy. This is the economy just coming back from COVID and the jobs that were added. Right. That's all what this is. It's not like that they that they did something in the administration to make this huge boom that happened. People were pent up. They wanted to go out. They wanted to spend money. And so, you know, now we could have a problem where it's overgrowth, actually, to the point where, again, we might go into recession in 2024. Yeah, like an engine that revs up real high before it crashes out. That was uh, kind of EJ's... Uh, uh, metaphor earlier. Uh, but EJ, when it comes to all this talk, this is something that Democrats are so uh, in favor of electric cars, solar energy, but that benefits China way more than it benefits the U.S. economy. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. And, and that's true for virtually uh, every stage of, of EVs, whether we're talking about sourcing the raw materials, the manufacturer, the assembly, et cetera. And the fact is that these EVs are, are not profitable. Biz the, the actual business is selling them. These car manufacturers are losing tens of thousands of dollars on each EV. The only reason they're making them is because they are effectively the only way, by incorporating that into their, their mix of sales, it's the only way to actually meet the ridiculous 
ridiculous uh, regulatory standards that have been put in place by the Biden administration. And once you take into account all, all of the different subsidies and regulatory costs and, and everything else, a recent report that was literally just a, a few weeks old now has revealed that EVs cost about twice what a typical car costs. Mm -hmm. Well, again, once you include all of these hidden costs, it's just the fact that, oh, you know, tens of literally tens of billions of dollars are hidden by government action. Yeah, it, and, and this is something that is so important for politics as well. What people are paying at the pump and Melissa, I would imagine we'll hear less. I don't know. Maybe we won't. But as people start feeling uh, the pain at the pump. Prices are going up there as we look at this global conflict perhaps spreading. You might hear less from the Biden administrations on EVs because Americans don't want to hear this. They're struggling to make ends meet as it is. They don't want to feel like electric cars are being pushed down their throats as well. No, electric cars are very expensive. Not everyone can afford an electric car for number one. And number two, if, if it turns out to be that even gas prices tick up a little bit, which they have, gas prices, oil prices typically are volatile to begin with. They've come, they've come up and down and up and down in Biden's administration. But the fact is that if you're at a certain economic level, you're never going to be able to afford an electric car. And personally, again, I live in Manhattan where I can walk everywhere, take public transportation, but that's just not feasible for many, many places in the United States. There is no public transportation. Yeah. You need a car to get around. And again, if you can't afford one, then what are you going to do? How are you going to get your groceries? How are you going to get to work? How are you going to get anywhere? We all can't work from home. And I mean, they, they want people to take public transportation or work from home and say it's going to save the environment. Well, that's that that sounds great theoretically, but in practical, yeah. you know, you know, practical application, it just doesn't work. And then the one one thing I want to say also is that, I mean, as far as electric cars go, it's not convenient where you have to charge the car. These charge stations are not at enough places. It's just not convenient. Yeah. No. And, and a lot of the energy that goes to these charging locations comes from coal-fired power plants or other forms of fossil fuels that they're trying, they say, to get rid of. But it's just not that easy. It's been a great conversation, EJ and Melissa. Thanks for uh, talking about the financial world and also diving into the world of politics with us. We'll have to do this again sometime. This was fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you.